Welcome back to IGN Live from Gamescom 2018. Dragon Quest XI is just around the corner, and we have rounded up the creator of the Dragon Quest series and the director of Dragon Quest XI. Thank you so much for coming by the IGN stage. Uh, and thank you, Becca, for translating today. Yeah, you're very welcome. So, uh, what are you guys showing off at Gamescom this week? Do you mean by the in the playing booths? Yeah. Uh, the Dragon Quest Series is going to be a very interesting game. It's a a <laughs> so we, we've gotten two parts of the game that we have ready for you to play. Uh, the very first part is the very beginning of the story, showing the protagonist where he's from and how the whole story starts. The second area that you have that you can explore at Gamescom this week is Partway through your adventure, it's a desert country where you can go around and have your adventures. So, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And actually, I'm sorry, we, we have three. There's actually one more element added, which is a bit more challenging for the more advanced players or players that have played before, which is a quite difficult dungeon. Interesting. Uh, okay, so could you give us sort of a synopsis of, of who our protagonist is and what the story is you're telling this time? Uh, so the story starts with the protagonist, uh, also known as the Luminary, and it starts out with him, and he gets captured. Hmm. So he is, he is a protagonist who a lot of people are after him. Okay. Any hint as to why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to play the game to okay. find out. Fair if enough. I say it here, it's going to be a spoiler. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so I guess one of the big changes uh, in, in Dragon Quest XI, as opposed to the earlier games, is that there aren't, there aren't random battles, right? Yes. そうですね。あの、シンブルエンカウントなんで、物語を進めたい時と、あの、レベルアップしたい時の、まあ、うん、概要さんが好きに選べるところですかね。はい。あ、yes, that's true. Battles happen when you approach the enemy, so it's kind of up to the user whether they want to enter a battle or, you know, do it to level up. うん。あの、あの、モンスターがそれぞれあの、生態系というか、あの、そこに住んでいるかのような感じで、あの、行動してたりすることもあるので、それもあの、一つの見どころとしてはあげられます。and of course the monsters just kind of exist in the world you can see them in their own little ecosystems mm -hmm. going around so that's actually one of the more interesting parts to watch for and to look at in dragon quest hmm. and can you tell us about the battle system it looks like uh you, you are able to move around you have some free roam ability mm -hmm. while in a battle じゃあ、Yes, it is, it is turn-based, but you know, you can go right up to the monster and figure out what you're going to do. Uh, and it allows you the ability to make all sorts of calculations and form plans. あの、今こう動いて、あの、なんだろうな、自由にその動きながら戦えるっていうのもあるんですけど、もう一つのモードとして、あの、カメラを固定させて、あの、攻撃する対象だったりは、あの、分かりやすくなるっていうようなモードも
uh, creating a new Dragon Quest for a, for a modern audience? Do you, mm. do you feel like you have to approach it much differently than you did, did way back at the original games? ドラクエシリーズというのは非常に長く続いているシリーズなのであのまあ今回は現代のオーディエンスに向けて新しく作るということであのアプローチを変えなきゃいけなかったところはどこかありましたかそうですねあのやっぱり11ってことなんで、まあ、これまでの集大成プラスバンなんで11新しい出発点ということを意識してですね、うんまあ、全く新しいユーザーにも遊んでもらえるようにその遊びやすく。プラスそのフリーユーザーにはいろんな過去のオマージュを入れたりとかして、まあ、両方の,あの人たちに遊べるように作ってます。Yeah, I mean, this is, this is number 11, so we were really aware that this is our, we're entering like the next era of Dragon Quest, it's number one all over again,、mm. and it has all of the collect, a collection of all of the best things of Dragon Quest up until now, and we wanted to make sure that it was like the best version of Dragon Quest possible. But On top of that, while it is still approachable and easy for people who are playing it for the first time to get into, there's also, there are also homages to previous Dragon Quest games so that people who've played the series for a long time will play and you know, find little bits and pieces that make them remember earlier games. And this might be a little bit different of an answer than the question that you were asking, but this time for the overseas version, we've actually added some functions in that make it a little bit、uh, more familiar or po- perhaps easier to get into for Western players. Interesting. Can you show us the voice key? 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 日本版から改良されています。And to give、uh, some very, a very simple outline of what those new features are,、uh, firstly, we have, of course, the voiceovers that have been added.、Mm-hmm. We have a dash feature that's、mm-hmm. been added.、Uh, the menu has been made a little bit、uh, more westernized and perhaps、mm-hmm. easier to look at.、Uh, in addition to that, we also have an option of a first person camera, which allows you to kind of change the perspective with which you see the world. world.、Mm-hmm. So those are the functions that we've added to the Western release. Interesting. Yeah, I, I understand the language track is entirely new. The original Japanese game is text only.、Uh, why make that? It's a pretty significant addition.、Uh, do you feel like Western audience is really expected to have full voice acting? そうですねあの一番、まあ、目立つというものはやっぱりキャラボイスを追加したことそれはあのかなり大した追加だと思うんですがそれはなぜ追加することになったんでしょうかあの欧米のオーディエンスはそれを期待してたからですかあの日本語はすごいあの微妙なニュアンスを使えられる言語なんですけどもやっぱり英語はシンプルなんでその辺は言い方とか演技とかそういうことが必要だろうと思ったんですねその方がよりキャラクターの感情が出せるかなと。Japanese is quite a nuanced language, and there are a lot of things that you can express in text that、uh, English, as a, perhaps a more simple language in some ways,、uh, kind of relies upon tone of voice and、uh, emotion expressed in sound. So I thought that it was really important to add that element to the English version of the game or the other Western versions of the game in order to add those nuances back in. であのボイスをつけることにも関連するんですけども、そのローカライズをするにあたって、よりその世界観をあの臨場感のあるものにするためにあのキャラクターの名前を変えたりだとかあの地域の,あの名りですねをあの出したりだとかあのそういった工夫をしながらあのよりなんですねたくさんの人にその没入感というんですかねを与えるような工夫をしながらえーローカライズをしてたりします。Added in,、uh, we changed the names of the characters from the Japanese versions. For the different regions that characters were from, we gave them accents、mm-hmm. and kind of gave a more immersive feel to the game. It's more like a, a world adventure. Interesting. So, we were just、uh, seeing some footage of a character named Silvando that seemed pretty important. What can you tell us about that character? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
So he might look kind of strange, but he's got this like knightly thing going, and mm. that that's really like at the very core of who he is. I see. Mm. Uh, okay, one question, one more question before I, we let you go. You mentioned earlier that Dragon Quest XI includes all the best parts of Dragon Quest. Mm -hmm. In your mind, what are the best parts of Dragon Quest? ね、I mean, yeah, you go back and there are just so many memorable parts of the game and so many memorable scenes. And I actually, I don't want to say too much about it because I want people to be able to go through it and find these, find these things for themselves. Oh. <laughs> actually, that scene is the best scene, but oh. not that scene. Whoa. <laughs> Very so, really, uh, so mysterious. <laughs> well, we are very excited to play the game. Uh, luckily, we don't need to wait too long. It's out September 4th. So thank you so much for coming by the Aijin stage here at Gamescom. あの、もうそろそろ発売するということで、あの、もうそれを見る